I want it. Give it to me. I want it. I want it. Give it to me. I want it. It's mine. This is the original intake, made of plastic. It's got little, I don't know what all these actually do. Someone, someone says they're like resonator tubes, but you see the pipes, they're actually uh, like oval shaped. And I think when you put them both together, you may get the same surface area as the intake, possibly. Um, but the plastic, they fit okay. They look good, but look at Luke's. <laughs> Well, sure what you got. So this is the MENA intake, um, the MENA gallery intake um, system and I only replaced it because my plastic one was starting to look a bit worn out and old when I took, the, um, when I took it off to put the supercharger pulley on. Um, so yeah, I've been doing some testing with this around heat temperatures at the intake and also at the airbox and comparing the two, which you'll see in this video at some point. So within the kit, it came with yeah, it came with these bits, these all these Jubilee clips. Yeah. Um, it didn't come with that one. It came oh, okay. With, so I had to put that on myself, but it came with a piece of hose. The hose wasn't long enough. It's about an inch short. Oh, so okay. I don't know if that's just because they sent me the wrong one or they cut the bit short. But I had to okay. cut the old one off and just push it in to extend it. But I'm going to get a piece, a longer piece. Right. Um, and obviously, underneath there, you can see it's got the. <laughs> um, that, it's obviously got the join there as well, yeah. it's got the two Jubilee clips. And you've taken a picture on the inside of this, and the welding is it's really quite nice, smooth, nice and neat. It's almost like they bent it, like they cut it, bent it, and then just put a seam weld on. It's so difficult to get on. Yeah. So yeah, well, it looks really nice, right? It does look good. So Luke's been doing some um, sort of heat tests with, uh, like you see from the videos, but he's put uh, the temperature sensor in the airbox. The one in the intake there to see what the heat difference is between the air going in. He's done it on the, the standard intake and then again on that on this. So we'll go through his test yeah. there. We've also done it on with a heat wrap as well, with some cheap heat wrap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so this time round we've now got a sensor in there. Right, watch before it goes in intake and we've now got a sensor in the air box on the left hand side of the car so we're at 53 miles an hour again air, air box temp is 16.2 and intake temp is 16.5 16.6 i've uh, just been doing some side road driving not very heavy driving just uh, normal driving 
just parked up, engine on. We'll see what happens to the temperatures as we stay here for a bit. So far, the air box hasn't really risen much, but the intake temp is increasing quite quickly. Outside temperatures reading is 11 degrees, which from previous video we can see is pretty accurate within about half a degree. You can see it's about four degrees difference between the airbox temperature, which has got a cold feed or supposedly cold feed coming in from the front of the car, to the actual temperature that the air goes into the engine or the supercharger at of 20 degrees now but they're both increasing quite rapidly as you can see okay so here we've got the mina intake fitted um this time round, i've had to put the sensor in there rather than there just because of the way i've had to fit it and access because of the um clips so it's probably well it must be about within an inch of where it was last time anyway that's good enough for this test. Um, so yeah, let's see what, what we get from this. An update, we've been driving a little bit longer now, um, still at 50 miles an hour. Um, we're looking more likely, it's, you can see it there properly, but um, we're about two degrees different between the airbox temp and the um, intake temp. The car's really warmed up a bit more now. So roughly two degrees different. Okay, so we've been sat stationary for less than a minute and you can see what the te happens to the temperatures I can't remember off the top of my head how this compares to the plastic intake um, but I did know that it shot up quite quickly when you're stationary as well Obviously the air coming in through the air box is increasing whilst we're stationary, so obviously the temperature on the right is going to increase anyway, but you can see that the gap is, is getting bigger. But that's no different to the plastic intake, I think they're both doing roughly the same thing, I think really, um, they're both increasing anyway. So yeah, we're now five degrees difference between airbox and intake. But interestingly, the airbox is starting to increase quite quickly now. And that's one thing we haven't changed in this test is the intake coming out from the outside of the car up into the airbox. So I'll pop the bonnet and see what um, the, the actual intake feels like to touch. Um, it's not too hot to touch, just about. It's getting a bit hot now. Um, certainly hotter underneath. So it feels like the, the air is, the hot air is coming up from the bottom of the engine, or underneath, and heating this pipe up. So it's um, almost too hot to touch. Final test, MENA intake has now got heat wrap around it. Uh, sensor, again, thermometer sensor's there. We've also got one on the left hand side inside the airbox, as a reminder. Both going back inside the car for readouts whilst driving. So, let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we've been running about 10 15 minutes now um, on a 50 mile an hour motorway stretch. Um, left hand side is airbox temperature, right hand side intake temperature. Okay, so we've been sat still for about 30 seconds. Left hand side, airbox temp. Um, notably today it's 16 degrees outside according to the car. Um, it's a lot warmer out there today. Um, so the airbox is one degree above ambient but it's steadily rising like it has done every other time. Um, intake temp, 22. So I'll just sit here for a couple of minutes and see what how that rises up different to the 
airbox temp. Still quite warm, it's getting really, really hot there. Um, almost too hot to touch. And this is really, really hot. Yeah. Yeah, very, very hot under there. So, uh, unfortunately, the heat wrap doesn't seem to have done much at all on the face of it. But we now have to go away and study the results of all of them, compare them, um, and see which one comes out on top, if anything. So, after collecting Luke's brilliant data, so thank you, Luke, for doing that, we can see that the on the first um, graph, we've got the OEM uh, intake showing a 0 0.7 degree increase from the air intake temperature to the intake temperature. The second figure is showing the MENA gallery uh, intake, which is showing a 1.8 degree increase. And on the far right, you've got the MENA gallery intake with heat wrapping put around it to, to protect it. And that's, uh, it did work a bit, and you can see it's reduced it down to 1.5 degrees above the intake air temperature. For this second set of data, this is with Luke at a standstill with the engine still running. Uh, so you can see with the blue bars, that's after 30 seconds. And the OEM is actually slightly co colder. With the orange bars, that's after a further 30 seconds, and the grey bars a further 30 seconds again. You can see they're very much, very similar to each other, with the heat wrapped amina uh, being slightly less out of the other two. But we do feel that the, the heat increase was actually due to the, the air coming from the radiator by the front grill is directly beneath the, the cold air feed going into your air boxes. So that hot air was being sucked in uh, and, it, and was in, uh, making the increase of the airbox temperature and the intake temperature. So it's not necessarily due to the, uh, the heat soak from the MENA gallery, but, as, but we can see that from the 50 mile an hour graph, there is a heat soak going through there. So yeah, uh, surprising results to be honest, um, but we need to see how it does on the dyno. Thank you. I'm smiling, but you can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> you just get warm in it. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Uh, uh, Luke's going to change over his mic meter gallery intake for back to the standard one. Okay. To do one more final run to see if there's any see difference. Because difference, yeah. Paul was interested in the meter gallery intake anyway for the the F type when you had the Predator, but it didn't fit. Yeah. But it fits the XFR. Um, so he's kind of interested in, to see if it makes a difference anyway. <laughs> So here's the figures after the dyno run, uh, 577.44 air crank um, horsepower and the torque was 574 and that's with the Mina intake. So what we're going to do now is, is swap it over for the OE and see what we get. So the MENA intake is now off and we got the uh, original one back on and it's time to do another run. We've got the three runs here, 
The red one was the original. And you see the torque value is really quite low. This is after the uh, the pulley change. There's a 538 it was, it was getting with the Mina. Then the the torque curve after the, the, the high performance up, update, which is the green. And then the only change between the green and the blue is the fact that we took the Mina intake off and put the original one back on. Look, at, look how the torque has shot up. We've also got an extra uh, 23 brake horsepower. So if you've got a Mina, take it off. Nah, I don't want it, you have it. <laughs> uh, you can have it. No, no, you have right, it, I don't I'll, want it. I'll put it on eBay then. Okay, it goes on eBay. <laughs> Uh, so I can take my mask off because there's no one else around me for a minute. So, conclusion is the original airbox uh, intake is actually achieving 600 brake horsepower. Um, Mina on their website say it's supposed to achieve an, an additional 8 to 13 horsepower at the wheels. It actually achieved 23 brake horsepower at the crank less. So. So Luke's actually um, put it in his boot. He's not going to put it back on the car. He's going to go in like this. You're going to go, I'm a happy man, aren't you, Luke? I'm going to leave, yeah. Over there. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to get stickers made. The VZU 600 Club. <laughs> That's what we need, right? 600 plus club.